Hi, this is Eric for Ojoy. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with displacement maps in Octane for Maya. And the scene that I'm using for this example is called rock underscore one.ma. Very simple scene, just has a little polygon rock and a flat plane and sort of a sunlight environment. So I have a glossy material applied to the rock here. I'm going to go into the attribute editor for that glossy material and I'm going to go down to the displacement input, click on this checker box. It opens up create render node to the octane displacement node. So there's only one node in the octane displacement group and this is it. So I'll click on this. And here are the attributes for the octane displacement node. The first thing I need to do is find my texture. So I'll click on the checker box here. I'm going to go to octane textures and under image, I'm going to use an octane float image texture. So the texture map that I'm using was created in ZBrush, exported from ZBrush. If we take a look at ZBrush, here is the rock that I created. It's got multiple levels of subdivision. At the highest level is 2.545 million polygons. The lowest subdivision level is about 9,000. So this low subdivision level is what you see in the scene. I used the Z plugin multi map exporter to create the displacement map. I also exported the mesh at the lowest subdivision level. And for my options in the displacement map, I set it to calculate from subdivision level one. I turned on adaptive and I set the mid value to 0.5. I left the other ones blank. So it's going to export to a 16 bit grayscale uh, texture map by default. And it exports as a Photoshop file, which I then converted into a TIFF. So uh, let's go back to that displacement node and to that texture and click on the folder here. And I'm going to go and find the file called rock underscore dm dot tiff that's in the source images folder and choose open. Don't see anything yet. So let's go back to that displacement node. The first thing we need to do is set the mid value since I exported using a mid value of 0.5. I want to make sure that I have the same thing in Octane. And they usually get the best results when you do this. If you set this to zero, it means that you're using like an EXR file where zero or black means no displacement. Positive values or lighter values are, are displaced outward and negative values display, in, displace inward. Uh, if you're using a displacement map that has a mid value of 0.5, that means that Values in the displacement map between 0.5 and 1 push outwards, and values in the displacement map between 0 and 0.5 push inwards. It tend to get better results with that type of displacement map. Next thing I need to do is set the level of details. The displacement map was created at a size of 4K, so I'll set this to 4096 by 4096, and now I can adjust the height. So if I set this to 0.1, Let's select the node so we can see this a little bit better. We get a very exaggerated displacement map. So the height is going to determine the, uh, the strength of the displacement map. So if I set this to 0.05, I get something a little bit more reasonable. And then you can use the displacement direction to determine how it's being displaced. And sometimes the results can be subtle, but you can get some nicer results depending on the option that you use here. And there's also a filter which will help to smooth out the displacement by adding just a little bit of a blur. And here's the filter displacement. So I'm going to set this back to none. The other thing that you might want to be conscious of is the subdivision of your surface. You'll get better results if you subdivide the surface. So I select the object here and I'll go into the channel box and look at the open sub D level and I set this to one. So generally speaking, you usually don't have to set it higher to that. That means it's subdivided one time. Um, but you can, if you really need to get more detail out of the displacement map, just be careful because the higher you set this value, the longer it's going to take to render. The other thing that is a good advice is um, you can displace a flat plane. In fact, I'll do that in a moment. Uh, or you could displace a completely smoothed object as long as the UV texture coordinates of your uh, surface, your polygon surface, match the UV texture coordinates of your displacement map. However, it will render a bit faster if you 
use a low resolution model that for the most part follows the contours of your displacement map. So you can sort of see that this is not just a perfectly smooth sphere. It does have uh, some contours in here created by ZBrush um, that sort of follow the details because this is the lowest subdivision level exported from ZBrush. So if you want to optimize your displacement maps and not take too long to render, try and have a low resolution version of the model that uh, follows the contours of the displacement map for the most part, as opposed to just a completely detail-free, like smooth surface or a flat plane. That being said, I did want to demonstrate um, a couple cool things you can do with displacement maps. So I'm going to hide the rock here and actually focus on the plane. I'm going to create a glossy shader for the plane, go into this glossy material, and I'm going to click on the checker box next to displacement, create a displacement node, and click on the checker box next to texture. And again, I'm going to use a uh, float image texture. Click on this folder icon, and in the source image directory, I want to find the file called JS Displacement Map Example. So here is the displacement map, and I'm going to choose OK. You can see a little bit of detail coming through already. I'm going to go back to the displacement node. Let's set this to 4K. You can see the details get a bit crisper, and now I'm going to start increasing the height. And what we get is this really cool, oh, let's set the mid value to 2.5 as well. There we go. And what we're getting is this cool kind of sci-fi kind of detail, sci-fi city type detail. And even though the plane itself is just completely flat, you can see that there is some stretching here, which you can try to alleviate using open subdiv. But do keep in mind that, you know, this is a flat plane and it's a 2D texture that's just displacing outwards. So there is going to be some stretching on the geometry. On the geometry. Now, the cool thing is how I actually created this uh, texture map to begin with. It was created with a program called JS Displacement Map that is created by uh, Lester Banks, and you can find it on windmillarch.net. It's a free program, and uh, it's really cool. So it's JS Displacement. Let's take a look at how it works really quickly. So here's the program. I'll open up the menu here. I'll go to the menu here and choose JS Displacement Classic, and you can see there's a bunch of sliders here. If I click on here, it will generate displacement map, and depending on the sliders you choose, you can create different variations. And uh, they have a bunch of different presets here, and it's all procedural, so you can get some, some really, neat, really neat looking displacements. And then when you find something that you like, you just you can save as a height map or a color or a normal map uh, and it's great for creating sci-fi details really quickly and you've seen I've used some of these textures in previous examples already so I highly recommend checking out uh, windmillart.net and download JS displacement map uh, it's a lot of fun but you can see here's just the result of that quickly make a sci-fi city in no time at all So I'm going to select the plane here and apply new glossy material just to get rid of that displacement. And let's bring back our rock. And I'm going to add another glossy material to that to get rid of that displacement. So you can't use procedural textures to create displacement. You can only use octane image nodes for displacement. But what you can do is you can bake one of the octane procedural texture maps into an image map and use it for displacement. So let's go into Hypershade. I'm going to graph materials on selected objects. So there's the new glossy material. And go into the attribute editor and click on displacement to create displacement node. There's our displacement mode. I'll go into octane textures and I'm going to choose Octane Baking Texture from the Mapping section. So Octane Baking Texture, let's plug this into the texture input of our displacement map. Let's set the mid value to 0.5 and level of details. Let's set it to 2048 by 2048. So we're not going to see anything yet. It still looks the same. Now we need to plug in a texture into the baking texture. So I'll go to Procedural. And let's choose, I don't know, Rigid Fractal. 
So I'm going to middle mouse button drag this into the input texture. Let's set the resolution to 2048 by 2048. Go back to the displacement node and increase the height. You can start to see it is getting displaced. So now what we can do is we can go to that rigid fractal node and add a scale. So we'll do scale transform. Let's set this to say 0.2. So it's gonna be pretty slow because it has to bake the texture before it applies it. So every time you make a change to this, it's going to be fairly slow. Uh, so just be aware of that. We could probably lower that height a little bit. Let's set this to 0.15. But it's kind of a nice looking surface there and it is an octane procedural texture. So that's the basics of working with displacement maps in Octane for Maya.